Hi, I'm Zach Billings, Vice President of Performance at Wikimotive, a boutique marketing agency focused on SEO. I got my start in auto retail over 14 years ago, started out doing marketing on the dealership side, moved into the vendor space, and I've been doing that ever since. I'm here on behalf of Humanity to talk to you about ChatGPT. And I'm Angus Fox, lead analyst for Think Better Marketing and vendor accountability advocate, here to explain some ways that ChatGPT may be useful for you and your dealership, and to be on the record groveling at the feet of AI before it destroys us all. So who is this workshop for? It's for anyone who's likely to start running into an endless barrage of chat GPT-oriented pitches and people talking about it as if it's all the rage and the greatest new thing. And it might be, but this is going to be helpful for internet marketers, internet managers, general managers, and everybody else at the store who is going to have some kind of interface with chat GPT or products surrounding it. So what is chat GPT? Well, it stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And in layman's terms, what that means is it's just a translator between you, a human being that wants to input human readable text and receive the same, and a database that collected information on the web, both public and private, that existed as of 2021. It's a static database, and what it's doing is taking your input, understanding the relative context within that database, and then spitting out something you can understand. What ChatGPT is not is truly generalized artificial intelligence. There's no brain here. There's no consciousness. What it is is a translator that understands the database and the input that you've given it and how to give you something back. So ChatGPT is an interface between you and a data model, and it also learns from you, but mostly within the current session that you're working within, as in when you feed it information and it feeds information back, and then you iterate on it some more, and we'll get further into that. It's learning as it goes and can adapt its responses. With that said, that information is not necessarily uploaded to the collective intelligence, if you want to call it that, until ChatGPT rolls up more information in a numbered release. So let's talk about how ChatGPT works. First, you input a prompt. What's a prompt? It's a description of what it is that you want ChatGPT to do for you. It might be to simply answer a question. It might be to produce a paragraph of information. It might be to write you a whole story. It could be to answer a math problem. Well, actually, it can't really do math, but I'll get to that in a bit. There are lots of ways that a prompt can materialize. Once you've input a prompt, it queries that against its database of information, public and private, that was available as of the last upload of information to it. In the case of ChatGPT4, that's mid-2021, and we'll come back to that. Next, ChatGPT generates a coherent paragraph format, assuming that's what you were asking for, response to your query. And it does that by anticipating the probability of words as they would appear in sentences and then into paragraphs. So at the end of the day, ChatGPT is really a glorified word predictor. It's kind of like when you're typing a text message on your cell phone and it predicts the next word, except take that many steps further. So what can ChatGPT understand? It understands basic text, regular expressions and phrases. It understands computer code. And as of ChatGPT4, it can understand the context of images. So that means you can generate prompts in language or formats that are easy to understand for you and easy to input. You don't need to structure the information in rigid ways or particular ways to get the desired result, although you may need to iterate a few times before ChatGPT will understand what you're asking for. So what's ChatGPT good at? It's good at things that don't require a high degree of accuracy, like writing you a script for a TikTok video. It's good at mundane tasks that benefit from text output and can be painful to perform at length, such as writing unique descriptions for your vehicles. It's also good at summarizing things with mostly correct, although potentially mediocre writing, such as if your vendor sends you a lengthy description of what they've done for you lately and you want interpretation, it can help with that. In short, ChatGPT is basically like a 10-year-old with access to the internet. And like a 10-year-old, ChatGPT may require more clarification, conversational context, or to be retold the same thing several times. Thankfully, ChatGPT is not subject to labor laws. So will ChatGPT replace Google and other search engines? In a word, no, but it is going to impact both the way that you interface with them and also the quality of the information that you find. As more and more people use ChatGPT to produce articles and information with an increasing amount of flaws and thin context, what you'll get is increasingly worse search results, which increases the importance of great quality human written content, which is why 
ChatGPT is not likely to replace your SEO company or your SEO anytime soon. What ChatGPT will do is change their workflow. It's a tool that should be utilized for efficiencies and improvements in workflow, but it is unlikely to ever replace good human written content and human input. ChatGPT will replace low skill, high time labor, things that require a lot of work and not a lot of expertise to generate, such as descriptions for vehicles, that 100% will be replaced in time by ChatGPT. So what are ChatGPT's limitations? There are many, and many of them you can work around, and a lot of the ways that you're gonna do that is by proofreading, fact-checking, etc. So first of all, ChatGPT is only mostly correct. Current estimates place that at about 80% correct. So what's the other 20%? Well, it's hallucinations. And this is an artifact of the predictive language model, where it's looking for what is the next word that should show up as it creates sentences, and when it gets that wrong, you get wrong information. And once it starts down that path of incorrect information, it continues to expand upon it so that it can create a coherent output for you. That means a snowball effect of incorrect information as your output from ChatGPT. You don't have to take my word for it when I talk about the limitations of ChatGPT. Just go to the homepage. It lists the primary ones right there, and the first is its accuracy. May occasionally generate incorrect information. That's the first warning on the homepage of ChatGPT, so you might not want to use it for generating your disclaimers for your ads. Just think liability and the integrity of the information that you're providing to your consumers. Don't use ChatGPT for things that need to be accurate. Next, may produce harmful instructions or biased content. Biased. Let's think of an example of that. You ask ChatGPT to write you an article on EVs versus ICE engines, and what it spits out is something telling you that ICE engines are going to destroy the planet. That may or may not be true, but we don't want to politicize the content on our website, so we want to think about the bias involved when we get an output from ChatGPT. Lastly, limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. The last update was mid-2021. And that means that after that, there's going to be limitations in terms of its accuracy when you're looking for specifics. A great example is ask ChatGPT to write you an article on the 2023 F-150. A lot of the stats are actually going to be old and outdated because it has a hard time understanding what is current. Want to see an extreme example? Ask it to write you an article on the 2033 F-150. It will give you an answer rather than telling you there is no 2033 F-150. And remember when I said it couldn't do math? I mean, it can't do math. It may give you a correct answer because it probabilistically was able to figure that out, but it's not actually doing any calculations. As you can see in the example provided, 216 minus 18 does not equal 339, unless we're calculating monthly payments. So what are we getting at here? Would you let your 10-year-old run all of the messaging surrounding your dealership and your dealer group? No. This requires trained humans to review, fact check, and massage the messaging that you get out of ChatGPT, and that will be required to varying degrees depending on the information that you asked for and its importance. So can AI writing be detected? Yes, it can. Do you care? You should. The reason you should care is that if you're paying somebody, an employee or a vendor, particularly an SEO vendor, to produce high quality content for you, I hope they're not taking shortcuts by just giving a prompt to ChatGPT and then calling it their own work. Ultimately, the reason this matters so much is that Google is looking for consumer-centric content, content that informs consumers, answers their queries, and is helpful. And ChatGPT does not produce that out of the box. So if you're getting unmodified, unhuman-filtered ChatGPT artificial intelligence content, it is not going to meet the threshold of being beneficial to consumers, so it's not gonna work for your SEO. So what methods are used to identify AI writing? There's four main ones, perplexity, burstiness, synthetic writing, and watermarks. Let's break each one of those down. Perplexity, based on the concept of entropy, refers to how complex a text is determined by its randomness. Burstiness refers to the variation in perplexity between sentences. You can think of it as perplexity is the complex nature of the words, and burstiness is the complex nature and variation in sentences. When you add these two things up, you often end up with text that doesn't read as human written unless further modified by a human. The text feels synthetic. You may be familiar with that from such popular places as my LinkedIn comments. And finally, 
Artificial intelligence often embeds a digital watermark into its outputs, such as images, videos, or text that it can detect. The watermark is invisible to the naked human eye, but can be detected and extracted using specific software or algorithms. Why is that bad? Because once somebody can identify that watermark, all of your content will be easily identified algorithmically. So it wouldn't take much for a search engine to find that and then lower all that content's ranking. So ChatGPT is useless then? No, remember, ChatGPT is mostly correct. For example, ChatGPT once helped a man to save his dog and trumped a human veterinarian. This gentleman took his dog to the veterinarian with a tick-borne illness, and he wasn't happy with the progress his dog has made after following the vet's recommendations. The next day, he took all his tests that he received from his veterinarian and placed them into ChatGPT, which was then able to give him a proper diagnosis. He brought this proper diagnosis to another vet, treated his pup, and the pup's still alive today. Now, would I recommend that for your children? Probably not. That being said, ChatGPT can actually pass a medical exam. Now that sounds scary, but you have to remember, medical information is some of the most well-documented information we have. And ChatGPT has a heavy medical bias in some of its training. Therefore, ChatGPT was actually able to pass the USMLE. So are we ready to cancel our dealership health insurance and just send all our people to ChatGPT for medical information? Really gonna depend on how much you wanna depend on the 80-20 rule. Ultimately, ChatGPT is all about the prompt. So, how do we write a good prompt? Number one, define the role that you want ChatGPT to play during your interaction. For example, pretend you're an expert copywriter. Pretend you're an expert at business to consumer email communication. Pretend you're an expert pay-per-click marketer. You need to give ChatGPT the context for its role in your interactions. Next, define your goals in your audience. Who is this for and what are you trying to accomplish? In this case, generate text for an in-showroom display targeted at Ford service customers, my audience, informing them about the pickup and delivery program, my goal. Number three, provide a context on what to do, not what not to do. Use positive verbs. Advise them to consult a service advisor to find out more information. And then define what format its output should take. In this case, include a headline, a tagline, and two separate short sentences about the ease and convenience of having your vehicle picked up or delivered for service. You could choose many different formats, such as HTML, JavaScript or Python code, Markdown. There's many different outputs you could use. Finally, use conversation to get the answers you want. Unlike me, ChatGPT is not a one-way street. You can interact with it. If you don't get the answer you're looking for, you can either fine tune your last prompt by editing or provide further conversational context to extract more information. For example, please rewrite those two sentences, but add the following. Please use English only in your response instead. Using the above information, please generate two coupons that would apply to this special. So what can it do for you as a car dealer? as we said earlier, things that don't require a high technical degree of accuracy. So for example, it would be fantastic to generate a lot of Google business profile questions and answers for your dealership. Don't forget, you can provide a context like your dealer hours or what products you carry, and it can use those in its answers. We all know we're supposed to create provider-specific initial email responses in our CRM, and we all know how fun that is. But with ChatGPT, you can give it a list, provide it a role as an expert business-to-consumer email marketer, and it can generate you unique initial CRM responses for every one of your vendors. We all know Google business posts are supposed to be transactional in nature, but they're a pain in the butt to generate. What if you could just extract all your service coupons, feed them into ChatGPT, and have Google business posts generated for you? You can also understand the search intent of keywords. You could take all your keywords that your pay-per-click is optimizing for and ask ChatGPT to bucket those for you. How many of my keywords are actually transactional? How many of those are navigational? How many of those are informational? And then you can ask your pay-per-click dealer why. Understand some vendor code on your website. We have hundreds of JavaScripts from who knows what vendor, and we're not all JavaScript experts. But good news, ChatGPT is. You can simply provide the code that the vendor provided and ask ChatGPT, hey, what is this actually doing? It's also good for something like generating TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter hashtags for a post based on the subject. Have a bunch of unique SRPs that you need some landing page content for. 
While I wouldn't recommend doing this without supervision, you can certainly give it some information and provide valuable context to your SRP pages to help search engines understand their purpose. We all know how much of a pain it can be to generate proper salesman training data or trading for other positions in our dealership. ChatGPT can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you by you providing it what tasks you want it to train on and generating training documents, including multiple choice questions for you. As we all work to phase out our pay-per-click vendors, we can use this to generate ad titles and descriptions. Even in its current state, ChatGPT generates AdWord titles and descriptions on par with a lot of the pay-per-click ads I see today. ChatGPT can also help you generate buyer personas, and then you can feed those buyer personas back into it to help you generate things like TikTok scripts, Google business posts, or other things to target those personas specifically. And finally, you can use it to ideate marketing campaigns. Got a new model coming out? Not sure what you have time to do before its release? Simply ask ChatGPT to generate a marketing schedule based around a new car model, and it will provide you a schedule of where to market, how to market, and the types of things you should be marketing with. So what can it do for car dealers? Well, when we consider all the things we've talked about, we probably should not be using ChatGPT to do something important like write model pages that require true technical information. Remember, we spent a lot of time trying to build our EEAT with Google, so providing it a bunch of misinformation will go ahead and erase all that expertise and authority that we've generated. I'd also keep it away from finance. Exactly. And you shouldn't use responses from ChatGPT if you don't think it understood the prompt that you provided it. Like a 10-year-old, you shouldn't let ChatGPT work unattended or unsupervised. And what that means is don't use the output without carefully checking the work first. And if you haven't figured this out yet, and it's a little self-serving, you should not let ChatGPT replace your SEO provider anytime soon. It simply cannot perform the tasks required for technical SEO, for detail-oriented content writing, and it just gets too many things wrong or is too canned in the end responses that it provides without heavy massaging from a human being. Think about how long it's taken you or how much money it's cost you to build up the authority that you have right now with Google. You've put a lot of effort into your SEO or more likely a lot of money. And if you switch over now to using thin, potentially incorrect AI-based writing, you're potentially gonna squander that and take steps backwards when you don't need to. So if you lean too heavily on AI content for your SEO, you're only one algorithm update away from being completely devalued in Google. Well, time to play good cop. Let's look at some prompts that produced a great result. We talked earlier about generating GBP question and answers. Let's look at what that prompt should look like. First, we wanna assign it a role. Pretend you're an expert local SEO. Next, we wanna define our goals and audience. Your task is to help me create and write 10 questions and answers for a Google business profile for the following auto dealership in the prompt in English. Number three, tell it what to do, not what not to do. The question should be written casually, conversationally, and cover basic questions customers would ask written in English. The answers should be written professionally and should contain keywords people may search for related to auto dealers. Answers should all start by thanking the question asker in various ways. Number four, define the format it should use. Organize everything into a markdown table. And if required, not required in this case because it's such a great prompt, use conversation to get what's required. So again, we just follow the standards of a good prompt. We provide it a role. We give it its task and audience. We told it what to do. And then we gave it an output format and we received exactly the result we expected. Good job, ChatGPT. Good result number two. Here, like we discussed, we're gonna provide some initial responses in our CRM for each one of our vendors. So we're gonna follow the same format. Pretend you're an expert at business in consumer email marketing. Pretend you work in a car dealership in the business development center. Create a first email reply thanking the customer for the opportunity to earn their business for each lead provider provided below. Thank them for their interest in the vehicle which they've submitted. In this case, this would be a Vin Solutions email, so I provided it placeholders. Use the placeholders make for vehicle make, model for vehicle model, and year for vehicle year. Ascertain the customer's best time for contact and which method they prefer. Finally, we ask them to create unique emails in English for the following lead sources. Because email is plain text, we don't have to provide a specific output format. Once again, ChatGPT is able to handle this task well and provides unique emails for each of the lead providers we provided. 
We talked about using it to generate hashtags. We can see a fine example of that here. Pretend you're an expert at TikTok marketing. Create 20 TikTok trending hashtags targeting an LSI keyword with some search volume for the following topic. In this case, electric vehicles. I then wanted to talk about the format. No tags, separate the keywords by space. Use only lowercase proper nouns. Write in English. Once again, by providing a good prompt, ChatGPT is able to give us the result we intend without any further conversational interaction. This one's much easier for ChatGPT, even though it would be much harder for us. Please pretend you're an expert in JavaScript. Can you provide me a description of what this JavaScript does? In this case, I fed it some JavaScript from TrueCar, and it was able to tell me what it was looking to accomplish. I see you, TrueCar. So what does this mean for SEO? It turns out ChatGPT may not be the end-all be-all for it. First, we've got some YMYL concerns, right? Your money or your life. As car dealers, we're often the second biggest purchase somebody will make, sometimes the first biggest, I've seen some of your markups, that a consumer will make in their life. Google treats certain categories of information, your money or your life, differently and really looks at EEAT for those things. Here in the Google Quality Raters Guide, it actually references that a review of a car, aka your model page, may even be a YMYL topic. If you recall earlier, Zach informed you that you were probably only one algorithm update away from being penalized. Here we can see Google already starting to kind of dip their toes in the water of that. They've made reference several times that AI should not be used to write content whose only intention is to rank in search. We can see that in their comments to both bankrate.com and in the facts they put out on the updates to their quality raters guide. I'm sure we all remember Panda. Google has a history of penalizing content that does not provide value to its users. There's also some ethical considerations about ChatGPT, not only in the way that they trained the model, but also in what it may mean for human employment and sustainability in the future. AI models also use a considerable amount of compute power and electricity. AI has already started to affect jobs in a lot of tech-centric industries. IBM, for example, is already reportedly preparing to halt hiring for jobs that could soon be replaced by AI, which is already affecting 7,800 positions at IBM alone. And the godfather of AI himself, Jeffrey Hinton, recently quit Google and issued very, very severe warnings, encouraging us not only to stop AI's development, but its use entirely. To be clear, I'm still on your side, AI. So what does the future of ChatGPT look like? It's actually pretty bright. Recently, they have announced plugins which allow any developer to extend the use of ChatGPT. We're already starting to see this in places like our chat tools, or apparently GM just announced that ChatGPT will be in new vehicles, but there's also independent developers developing things like AutoGPT, where you provide ChatGPT with a list of tasks and it can automatically figure out the steps to do them, including going to new websites, and it will perform and execute all the tasks completely by itself. Good stuff. You can also go to a site like learnprompting.org and it will explain to you how to interact with various AI models, including ChatGPT. I've given you the basics of what a good prompt looks like, but I've barely scratched the surface. And finally, you can always go to wikimotive.com. Wikimotive has a team of experts who are training with ChatGPT to understand its ins and outs. And if for some reason you can't remember wikimotive.com, you can just go to dealerprompts.com and that will redirect you automatically to a bunch of blog posts about ChatGPT and prompts you can use in your dealership. Thank you very much. I'm Angus Fox, lead analyst at Think Better Marketing. I hope you enjoyed our talk on ChatGPT. Feel free to reach out directly to me on any of the contact information you see there. That's even my private cell phone number. And I'm just happy there's video proof of me being on Team AI before the war starts. I'm Zach Billings, Vice President of Performance at Wikimotive. And if you have any questions about SEO, about how to use ChatGPT in the context of SEO, or how to prepare for the inevitable uprise of Skynet and the machines, feel free to contact me at my email, my cell, or on LinkedIn below. Go human race.